All right, well, thanks for coming. Um, great crowd. Uh, I'm Tony Afshari from uh, Seagate Technologies. We make lots of uh, interesting things, including storage building blocks, all the way from HDDs to SSDs. Uh, with SSDs specifically, there's some interesting things around NVMe that I wanted to cover today and tell you about some of the things that you're showing at our booth, so welcome. Uh, first, I wanted to just to paint a picture of for, you, for you around SSD and how it's moving and you know what's its growth and so forth, and specifically talk about enterprise. Most of us are here, for now at least, OCPs targeted around enterprise, but it impacts a consumer market as well. So the, the more efficient my data centers are built, the consumer is the one that is going to benefit from that, right? So it may even change the balance of how much storage you will have locally versus how much of it stays in the cloud. So what takes place in OCP and enterprise and in hyperscale and in data centers it impacts all of our lives individually. So let's test this. Okay, so in general, what we see with the SSD market is it's growing. Is anyone going to dispute that? No. I think the flavor of it is important. So what you see in the bottom is the notebook PC. Notice that that's been a little bit flat. flat, uh, flat. That has to do with the PC market in general. Uh, tablets, again, you know, it's an interesting market. It's pretty good size, but it's not growing as much as you would think. Channels is growing, and channel could be anything. It could be a SSD that I sell in a self-driving car. It could be an SSD that I put on Amazon.com and you guys buy. So there's different ways of getting an individual SSD in different kinds of systems out there, including industrial machines and so forth. The top band is interesting, and that's uh, enterprise. Notice that if you look at the rest of the market, enterprise and SSD still is fairly small. But it's pretty interesting dynamics within that market itself. So a couple of things. The trends are... If, if you look at the enterprise SSD, you still see a good mix of SATA, SAS, and PCIe. And when I say PCIe, that's primarily the physical interface of a drive and how it connects to the system. But the protocol, the underlying protocol over that is NVMe. So with SAS, we see a market that is still very strong in enterprise markets and traditional enterprise and the array storage. So if you look at the anatomy of an enterprise system, a box, these are bulletproof boxes, don't lose data, that people are deploying in data centers are typically SAS, uh, based on SAS. It's a dual ported drive, a lot of heritage and, um, and technology has been built into it for years. And so it's a very uh, important uh, interface that is not growing, but it's not going away either. And still a lot of innovations are taking place there. So we introduced, for example, a 60 terabyte SSD last summer. So I have it actually here. Uh, not cheap, I can't give it away, but uh, just gives you an idea of the kinds of innovation that is taking place in SAS. So here's a drive that has 60 terabytes of NAND in it. I have a version of this in my lab that goes up to 120 terabytes. Now you may ask, what would I do with that much data? It takes a, quite a bit of time to fill up one of these, but you'll be surprised some of the opportunities out there to, to uh, have a drive like that. A self-driving car, for example, can generate that much data uh, within two days of operation when you turn the debug mode on. For some of you guys who drive uh, self-driving cars, that debug mode is not available to you, but the manufacturers can turn it on and off. So this just gives you an idea of the innovation area there. With SATA, uh, we, we would have thought, if you'd asked me two years ago, I would have thought SATA would have dropped a lot faster. But we see a continuous strong momentum with SATA, primarily in the cloud, but also in the uh, channel and the server-based space. So if you look at the server space in general, a lot of that is is, is SATA, but it's being taken over by NVMe. And within NVMe, if you look at the different form factors, we were an acquisition by Seagate from LSI. We made 
uh, PCIe adding cards that were um, the original PCIe storage, if you want to call it. The reason is it's a PCIe interface to the host. And then with NVMe, um, it's becoming more mainstream to use different kinds of form factors. So even though the, the beginning of it, the roots of it was adding cards, we, the, the adding card form factor is not going away. It's a very nice way of creating storage, whether it's in a compute only node that there's very little room for drive form factor fronts, and also uh, it, it can complement a, a, a system that already has drive bays, and you need something like this to add additional solutions. Also, it's a good way of innovating things. So you could be offering a lot more technology in an adding card form factor. But ultimately, what we see is uh, M.2 and U.2, so two and a half inch and M.2 being something like this that um, is very relevant in hyperscale market, in enterprise market in general. Um, we think that two, two and a half inch form factor is really the right way to go because ultimately you see in systems and VME becomes very relevant, so you can easily put two and a half inch or consume those two and a half inch bay, uh, available slots in a, in a server or in a storage traditional array uh, by NVMe, but it's not quite there yet. So for now, it's a mix. So if I have a two and a half inch available slot, it could be NVMe, it could be SAS, it could be SATA. M.2, other than boot opportunities for SATA, ends up being an NVMe data storage opportunity. So uh, last summer, I demonstrated a two terabyte M.2 storage that was uh, the densest production enterprise storage in the world. I have a four terabyte version of that that I'm showing at my booth. So uh, small stick like this at four terabyte. And don't be surprised by mid-year, I'll show you an eight terabyte version of it as well. So. Uh, pretty interesting form factor, and we think that that's going to do well uh, in industry. So why NVMe? Performance, obviously. Uh, here's a bus that has been designed from grounds up with storage and networking in mind and with a direct connection to, to uh, the CPU unit. So lots of things in between is gone. So performance is the really number one reason, the most biggest advantage for NVMe. And in a form factor like this, so this is a by 16 adding card, you can get 10 gigabytes per second throughput out of this piece of storage. So great performance with NVMe. But cost is important too. Why is it that cost can be better with an NVMe model versus SATA? Well, there's nothing, there's very little between storage and CPU in an NVMe model. There is no HBA, there are no SAS or SATA switches, all of that is gone. So if you look at the overall compute need on the CPU side to deal with the NVMe storage, you can even use less compute from an IA architecture or an ARM, ARM architecture. So the overall cost of the system to build with NVMe is cheaper. That includes the total bomb. My, my processor cost, my DRAM cost, my storage cost. We did a study on an all-flash solution, a Ceph solution running SATA and NVMe. And we'll we're show you some white papers that shows building that system with NVMe ends up being cheaper. So cost is very important for NVMe. But also innovation. It's, again, a somewhat of a new spec. It's now just becoming very popular, obviously in hyperscale, but it's making its way into channel. A lot of the servers that you'll find in the channel and the server manufacturers are building uh, NVMe slots, so more and more of it will be available. The point is, it's a lot of opportunity in this spec for innovation. Things over, examples of that is what we're doing with streams, having multiple NVMe namespaces, having a, a fabric definition will allow you to virtualize NVMe storage and make it very easy to distribute storage for multiple compute nodes. So a, a, great, a great bus. Within NVMe, 
as I mentioned, there's different form factors that are available, and each of them are, are relevant. So a two and a half inch U.2 drive, I can plug into a standard server bay or a storage bay that is available to me, whether it's a JBOD or JBOF, or whether it's the server itself. So that's important. I've talked about M.2, and I've talked about the adding cards. So all of those are relevant, and all of those are available. You know, think of that particular picture that I'm showing. Essentially, the same drive, exact same drive, is available in a two and a half inch, an M.2, and an adding card. So if I'm validating this model, and I have an overhead of, an, or a budget of validating this and getting it ready for my production system, I really, there's a lot of commonality in the way I would, uh, I would, I, I would do the validation across these. I would do the qualification across these. So a very nice interface, different form factors, and in this particular example, same drive available in three different kinds. Depending on what your deployment model is, more and more you'll see storage servers out there that have nothing but NVMe drives in the front. If you are building a server that is supposed to serve multiple markets, you, be careful, you will be careful about how many slots you want to dedicate to NVMe versus SAS versus SATA. It becomes costly. But there is a big enough market out there that at least for a tier of your servers, you're going to offer nothing but NVMe. And we see that, and that's the picture on the left. And we, 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 if you come and talk to us, we'll show you some examples of some of the vendors that are doing that. Now, I'm going to skip the middle and go to the right. If you're in one of those scenarios where you don't have enough NVMe slots in the front, well, what's the best way of exploiting and deploying NVMe in a system? One thing that you find in a lot of systems is lots of PCIe lanes. So lots of PCIe lanes, if you look at the IA, uh, roadmap and even ARM roadmap, there's lots of PCIe's eventually continuing on the roadmap and available to us. Well, what if I can find a way to put more M.2's or deploy more M.2's in a system like that? Well, here's an idea. This is a carrier card that will allow me to have four M.2's on a carrier card. It's a by 16. I get 10 gigabytes per second throughput out of it. And as of this summer, I was only putting my two terabyte M.2s on here, so this was end up being an eight terabyte card. But with the four terabyte M.2, now I'm at 16 terabytes. I have a, on the floor, I have a server from Dell EMC, an R730 that has three of these in them. So that's three times 16 terabytes of storage in that server. So depending on how many PCI lanes and what slots are available, this is a very nice way of putting in NVMe and M.2 in a system. So flexibility, without adding any cost. The cost is ultimately the bits that you're manufacturing or producing on the drive itself. The rest of it is very little over uh, add-on. And then you have innovative solutions like trays and JBOFs that the one that is very interesting is the one uh, we're showing here. A few other customers are also, or partners are also showing it, is the Lightning. No, that's a, that's a JBOF that is, uh, can, in that each one of those canisters, those two and a half inch canisters, you can either put a single two and a half inch NVMe drive, I make one that is eight terabyte, or you can have two M.2s in that. When you put two M.2s in there, all of a sudden you get twice the bandwidth because instead of four lanes going to, out of that canister, now you have eight lanes going. So in each one of those, if I'm putting four of these, a four terabyte drive and two of these, I have all of a sudden eight terabyte per that canister, and I have for a 2U system 240 terabytes of very efficient, innovative NVMe storage. So very, very interesting form factor. It is OCP. Yes, its roots goes back to hyperscale. Its biggest deployment is in hyperscale, but we are seeing more and more of that making its way into traditional IT traditional IT infrastructure. So you see some financial institutions, some of them are here on the floor, that are demonstrating OCP gear. And that middle one is very cool because it's a very dense tray of NVMe storage, very fast, that you can zone 
to any um, compute elements in your rack. Now, M.2 and NVMe is innovative also in multiple ways. One thing that you've talked about is multiple namespaces. For some of you guys think of it as how SCSI used to have it with VDs. I'm demoing a product on the floor that has two namespaces, but very, it's very interesting because it's flash and DRAM. Now my DRAM is uh, non-volatile because I can keep it alive with SuperCap, but, uh, but as far as the system is concerned, what I'm, what I'm seeing is an NV DRAM namespace and a flash namespace. The nice thing about that NV DRAM namespace is that I can get extreme low latency for my IOs that I'm writing to it. Sub 10 microseconds for something that the system sees as storage. It's not DRAM, it sees it as storage. And I can put it in a tray like that, or I can put it in a, a, an aggregator card like this. One other thing that we talked about is the innovative things like, um, like NVMe over Fabric. So I don't want to talk too much about it, but think about that storage that I showed you, that tray that I showed you. If, I, if there was a way I could make it easier to virtualize that storage, have that available, that low latency as if it's a direct drive attached to any compute element in the rack, but with any distance added, that would be a great thing. And that's one of the foundations that uh, is very good around NVMe and NVMe over Fabric. It's a little bit of a different game when you have it in enterprise and you know having to put it in a black box, raid it, do all the nice things that an enterprise box does versus more of a hyperscale model of just sharing it and looking for the lowest latency uh, I.O. capability. Anyway, come visit us at booth B7. Uh, we'll be here to talk more about some of these technologies and more. Thank you very much.